I've got two servos set up here. They're both identical, other than the fact that this one is unmodified and this one's modified. And the unmodified servo, as we'd expect, has a range of around 120 degrees, while the modified servo has a range of infinity degrees, or an unlimited range essentially. What you end up with is a very torquey motor in a relatively small package. And I've used these things before for stuff like uh, little robots, because you can connect them directly up to the wheels of the robots, and they'll just motor right along. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to modify a servo to make one of these. I just disassembled my unmodified servo, and what we've got here is a circuit board, which does all the calculations for the servo, and then we've got a motor down here, which spins around all these drive gears, and ultimately the main drive gear up here. And then down in here we've got a potentiometer. And a pot potentiometer is just a variable resistor that tells the servo how this main drive gear is oriented in space. And that's pretty much just the whole feedback system is what a lot of servos rely on to uh, make such accurate little movements. And, you know, before we uh, modify this servo, I think it's essential that we learn how a servo works first. In order to understand how a servo works, we're going to follow a signal from the transmitter down to the servo and look at how the servo deals with that signal. So if you turn the wheel on a transmitter, uh, the servo basically picks that up and it recognizes that you've given it a new goal for its potentiometer. That basically means that the servo will not be satisfied until that potentiometer is in the position that you've specified. So what the servo will do is it'll start spinning the motor in one direction or the other uh, to spin all the gears around, ultimately spinning the main drive gear. And the potentiometer is connected directly up to that main drive gear. So as the main drive gear spins, so does the potentiometer. And then as soon as the potentiometer reaches that goal you gave it, the servo is going to cut all power to the motor and uh, stop spinning. So in order to modify a servo, we need to disable the feedback between the main drive gear and the potentiometer. That way when you give it a signal and it tries to correct for that signal, it will just keep on spinning and spinning and spinning and never reach its goal. In order to do this, we're going to replace our potentiometer with a very simple voltage divider. And this is essentially just two resistors uh, hooked up in series and it gives us sort of a potentiometer with a solid state. So you can't change it and it's just super reliable and cheap and easy to wire in. Now depending on your experience in electronics, you may not know what a voltage divider is or even how a potentiometer works for that matter. So I'm going to take a quick break and explain how both circuits work. Starting with our potentiometer circuit, you'll notice we have three pins. We've got a voltage in, a voltage out, and a ground pin. Now you could put something other than ground at the bottom here, but it's usually simpler if we just consider this to be zero volts, and that's generally how they're hooked up anyways. So at the top here, I put five volts DC coming in, which is pretty typical for a servo like we're using. And then this V-out pin is simply a pin that floats along a resistor. It can sweep up and back as you turn this knob. That's what's happening. And if you know anything about resistors, you know that they resist current flow, and therefore drop the voltage as current travels through them. So at the top here, we would have 5 volts DC coming in, and at the very bottom here, the voltage would get dropped all the way down to 0 volts. So as this V-out pin sweeps along here, it sort of taps off into different voltages along the way. It can sweep from anything from 5 volts all the way down to 0 volts. So that's what that 180 degree range gives us. Anything from 5 volts all the way down to 0 volts. A voltage divider can be thought of as a fixed potentiometer. You've got the same three pins. You've got a V in, a V out, and a ground pin down here. But this time this V out pin can't sweep back and forth. So it's fixed between two known resistances. If these resistances are the same, in this case I've chosen 2.5 kilo ohms and 2.5 kilo ohms. And if you add those together, you get 5 kilo ohms, which is what I measured this potentiometer to be. So the circuit is totally equivalent to this one. Uh, anyways, if these two resistances are the exact same, uh, that means that this voltage out here will be halfway in between this voltage and this voltage. So 5 and 0 makes sense that this voltage would be 2.5 volts, which is perfect because that's exactly what you'd get over here if you centered this V out pin. So if you found the endpoints of this potentiometer and centered them, so that would, in other words, be like the neutral position of your servo, you'd get 2.5 volts out. So that works out great for us because we end up with an equivalent circuit that never changes and always tricks the servo into thinking that it's in the centered position, which is exactly what we want. Before we go ahead and desolder our potentiometer from our servo and hook up our voltage divider, uh, let's just double check the pinout on this potentiometer. Generally how these things are hooked up is these two outer pins are the upper and lower voltages, and the, the middle pin, the center pin here, is the one that sweeps between the voltages along the resistor, like I was showing you a couple minutes ago. All you need to know at this point is which wire connects up to the sweeping pin. So in my case it's this brown wire, and that'll be very important when we're hooking everything up later on. 
To wire up my voltage divider, I'm going to take that brown wire I noted earlier and throw it between two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors. And in total, that's 4.4 kilo ohms across the entire thing. And I've thrown my other two wires on either side of that. With that, you're done modifying the electronics. The other thing you'll have to have a look at is the stopping pin on the main drive gear. Generally, these servos have a little pin that prevents them from spinning around more than 180 degrees. And mine was just a little uh, steel pin that was pressed into the brass drive gear. So I just took a rotary tool cutoff disc and ground it flush with the brass gear. And this just allows my servo to spin around more than 180 degrees without any sort of issues. And that leaves us with a super small, high torque, variable speed, bi-directional motor that only cost me about $10 to make in total. Even if you don't have a use for one of these things right now, keep in mind that uh, without too much trouble, you can modify an ordinary servo to spin around more than 120 degrees, or I guess 180 or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it might just help you out in the future. But that's about it for now, and as usual, thanks for watching.